Finally, we have to remove the, the head. So the, the best way for removing the head, of course, is by removing the skin and the muscles around the head, especially uh, at the level of the, of the neck. So by doing so, which is what I'm uh, performing right now, of course, we have to know where the joint exactly is. So this is the Atlantic occipital joint. So we have to cut at that way. And rapidly, I can see, first of all, the point of joint, which is just there. It's very clearly seen. Then what I need is, I insist, to separate the muscles at that way. So we are almost reaching that. Then just with the tip of the knife, I can cut the spinal medulla. And then, especially if you are half a table, it's much easier. But what you have to see is to separate the head from the trunk. So if you are at that way, you can try to open, as I'm doing now. And then, with the knife, try to cut the rest of muscle and separate, finally, the head. Of course, the bigger the animal, the more difficult it is. And sometimes, if you have a kind of surface in which you make the corresponding force on both sides for separating, much better. Here we have, then, the, the head. And we will study afterwards. OK, there are still some issues to be uh, studied in the animal uh, during the necropsy. One is the brain. So we should learn how to extract the brain. And another important thing is the study of nasal turbinates. Nasal turbinates uh, are, of course, very, very important in certain diseases, especially atrophic rhinitis, uh, since we see a loose of total volume of such turbinates. So there is uh, an international recommendation of cutting the nose in a transversal way that we will show how to be performed. However, first of all, we will try to, uh, to remove the brain. And for doing so, there are different systems. In our case, you will see that we are taking the whole brain and uh, we are just crushing a little bit the bones of the, of the skull. Uh, so we will maintain the part of the nose intact. So we will not touch it. So the, the easiest way to do so is, first of all, to remove the, the skin from this more caudal part of, the, of the, the face. And then we will show which are the parts where I should cut or broke the, the, the skull. So first of all, I will remove the skin. So usually, I'm going from caudal to cranial. And usually, I'm separating the skin until I see the eyes of the animal. So at this point, I reach such moment in which here I see the skull directly. Then what I will need is to make three major cuts. One cut will be, if you are looking at the lateral angle of the eye, to go just one or two centimeters, depends on the edge of the animal, in a caudal way, and then to make a transversal cut here. OK. And then from the edges of this first cut, I will have to go to the occipital condylus. So if this is the point, make another cut here. The occipital condylus are very clear to be seen here, both. So we will have to cut at that way and in both sides. So at, with this operation, we will be able to extract the skull, the part of the skull which is covering the brain. How we will do that? Of course, we can do with the saw. So it's a possibility. We can do this. And then we will follow the steps I indicated. But there's another possibility that under field conditions tends to work better, which is this one. To use a kind of eggs, could be a smaller eggs. And what we will do is to make the corresponding knots here until I'm breaking the skull in the different parts. Even this looks as difficult, or that might be the brain will be destroyed, this tends to work very well. Because usually, we never reach 
to the brain just on the bone. And we will do right now, and then you will see that we can extract without any problem this part of the bone. Okay, now we will proceed to open the, the school, and as indicated before, I will use the eggs in order to make the corresponding cuts. So first of all, I'm just taking the, the, the remnants of the skin that I have re removed before in order to tightly take the, the, the head, and then I will start doing the different cuts Then I have to go to the occipital condyles, as you remember. For one side, for the other side. and finally to finish that part. And as you can see, I can mainly remove the school here. Now with such cuts we can remove the most of the school here so we can perfectly observe the presence of the brain and basically what we, are, we observe here is the meninge. So in fact we are not looking at the brain at this stage, we're looking at the meninge. So the first step that we will have to do is to remove the meninge. The, the, the easiest way of doing so is just by taking it, putting it in a kind of vertical situation and try to cut the meninge for the sagittal area, just in the middle. So by doing so, I'm just cutting in between. And then you will see here that I can cut on the same or following the same cut I did before with the AX on one side. And now I'm a star seeing the brain on one side and also on the other side. Okay, at this point, we perfectly see the brain. When there's a kind of meningitis, especially, and sus uh, suspicion of bacterial meningitis, it could be a good moment to take a swab sample, and swab sample specifically is very typical from the third ventricle. So we can put the swab at that way in the middle of the two hemispheres, and then take the corresponding sample. Of course, one of the best ways to study meningitis is in beforehand to try to look for cerebrospinal fluid. If you are able to remove cerebrospinal fluid, this is the best sample that you can, can get. Or sometimes even the swab can be taken from the foramen magnum of the uh, occipital bone. So right now the next step is try to remove the brain from the skull. For doing this we will need to cut the cranial nerves. So remember that the, the brain is attached within the cavity by the cranial nerves. And those cranial nerves are difficult to be seen, but are always inside. So here we have the foramen magnum. So we will cut inside at both areas, so right and left, in order to remove the brain without causing damage. So at this stage, and this is difficult to see because you should be seen yourself, but there are the different nerves I'm cutting. When this is sufficiently cut, we are just removing the whole brain, so we have the whole piece in perfect shape, so even we have been using an AX, which apparently looks very dangerous, we can got the whole brain without any problem. Again, if we are interested in some kind of bacteriological analysis, normally it's much more interesting to take the cerebrospinal fluid or a swab 
uh, at the time of removal of the brain or the time of the, of the meninges. However, we used to uh, have the whole brain for fixing in formalin. Sometimes it depends if we are thinking on a potential biological problem. We may cut in two halves and one half is used for histopathology and the other half is frozen or uh, submitted to a microbiology department. So in general terms, we are not separating the different parts of the brain because it's always very important to know that besides the hemispheres and the cerebellum, which is very easily to be seen, we also see the pons, the brain stem, the piriform lobes, the olfactory lobes, etc. So it's very, very important to know for a pathologist which part is each one. Because of course, if you are taking just in pieces, then it's very, very difficult to assess what's going on. And in this situation, we should fix the brain in an entire form. The very final part here would be the study of the nasal turbinates. As I told you before, atrophic rhinitis is one still important disease that we should examine in all cases. And even sometimes there are atrophy of the nasal turbinates, not of uh, infectious origin, but also linked to environmental issues, especially if there's plenty of dust or some gases. So the best way of uh, studying these turbinates in general terms is to make a cut of the nose. However, there's an international point which is recognized by everybody, which is, especially in order to get always the same image, just uh, at the level of behind the first superior premolar. Sometimes it's difficult to know where the first premolar is, but it coincides with the lips here, the joint of the upper and lower lip. So we will cut exactly at that way. For the reason, we will use a saw, certainly. However, the saw that difficultly can cut the, the skin. So for the skin, we will just mark here at the labial commissure. We will cut using the knife. And then we can cut at this level by means of the saw. So here we have the saw, and what we will do is just to cut exactly for the part that I indicated. Okay. Here you will see that once cut, we can observe first the yellow color. But the yellow color, remember, is the effect of the saw in this case. It's not uh, anything pathological. But the most important part is that you see the nasal turbinates filling the nasal cavity with the nasal wall here. And very especially, this is the lower turbinate, the lower turbinate has an upper and lower volutes. So the lower turbinate is very big at this stage, at this point of cut. And here we see the frontal sinuses already and the presence of in a vestigial form of the upper turbinate. So as long as this space is filled, we should consider that the turbinates are normal. As long as you see much more space here, you can have the idea that you have some degree of atrophy of the turbinates. Of course, you will have to uh, elucidate if this is due to environmental reasons or you might be dealing with atrophic rhinitis. So you have seen uh, until now uh, one procedure of necropsy of pig. You have to think that, as indicated in the beginning, different systems can be used, but the most important issue is to get all the information that a carcass can provide you. Uh, so my recommendation in all cases is try not to forget uh, anything, 
try to look for all the organs, all the systems, use the right tools for doing so, and very importantly, when we are talking about uh, diagnosing a condition, it's very, very important as well to select the right peak to necropsy, because if the peak is not representative of the condition you are facing with at the farm, very likely you will have results which will not fit with your clinical problem. So I really hope that this uh, necropsy session has been useful for, uh, for your future work. Thank you very much for your attention.